Hey guys, it's Randy here at Mall Domestic Church. I want to do a video with you guys today where I'm going to talk just throughout the day with you guys about what the Lord has done in my life over the last few weeks and how he's just continually directing my steps towards him um, and all the little things that he has been just kind of like making me aware of. And I just think that if it's been helpful to me, I imagine it could be helpful to at least one other person, like I always say on here. And that's the goal is to like bless and encourage just one other person. Um, so I'm still in my jams, my jammies. I'm going to go ahead and get dressed and then bring my son to school. I got his lunch ready. My husband did a very romantic thing this morning. So it snowed last night. The weather's been pretty good. It snowed last night and um, I really like to have the van in the garage during the winter time because the little ones. Um, I know so many people don't have a garage and we've lived without a garage before, but it's just now that we have one, I really appreciate having the van in. And so I said to him, um, he had a car in there, he's fixing up and some stuff on their side. And I just was like, oh honey, maybe, you know, at one point, if you could get the, um, how do I say it? Something like, oh, no, I think I said like, oh honey, we need the garage. I think I said like that. Um, but I had talked about it last week with him about how oh, it would be so nice for the winter to have it in there. But I just said, oh, like, you know, so before work, he went out there and he moved stuff around, moved cars around, got it in. I went to go check. He had like this blow dryer thing. He was like heating up the, the windows and getting ice off of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so romantic. <laughs> so I told my daughter, I said, honey, this is real romance right here. <laughs> so it was like a real big blessing. And I just wanted to add that in because sometimes... Um, we have to remember what a blessing it is to have those just regular everyday things done and how much work is put into it by the other person, whether that's someone in your family, your spouse, some, you know, and sometimes we're not natural encouragers or like, oh, thank you so much. Um, but just to be able to notice those little things, he obviously didn't need it. He's pretty stoic. He was like, didn't need it. But, um, but I was really appreciative. So I just want to add that in. Okay. I'm gonna go get dressed. Okay, so I'm all dressed. I dropped my stuff at school. The big kids are having a snow day. So last night, so they're all on the trampoline in the snow. Um, I got dressed, obviously. Um, so yeah, so I'm ready to talk to you guys more about how God has really been working in my life lately. There's a few areas that I really want to discuss. So I had for a long time this kind of like spirit of confusion all over me um a lot of back and forth like um what am i supposed to do almost this false sense of discernment going on when nothing was ever really being discerned and just a lot of flip-flopping and confusion that went on with so much of my life and it's gone on probably from the time i was a teenager up until recently um, so that's one thing that God, that God has really like put his hand on in my life and, um, and has really been healing me. Another thing is helping me to let go of certain people in my life. So yeah, so people in my life that I felt that I was responsible for and that I was not responsible for. And God has really helped me to see that, um, he's really directed my my footsteps and my path and saying like this, these are the people you're responsible for. This is where I want you to have your focus on. So that was like the second thing. And the third thing was really letting go of these worldly concepts and ways of doing things that really just pertain to the world and are not, um, are not something that the Lord wanted me to, um, use for figuring out, for thinking, for all that. So that seems kind of vague, but I'm going to get into each one now. <laughs> So I'm just all over my house because I'm like helping the kids. It's snow day. So some are in, some are out. Um, so the first thing I talked about was kind of this like false spirit of like discernment. But basically it was just like the spirit of confusion where I was like constantly, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? But instead of like really like searching for truth, I was like in this perpetual state of like, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Maybe I should be doing this other thing. And it came out in things like, what do I wear? Um, what kind of homeschool curriculum should I be doing? Um, how should I like run my home? Like everything was this like huge discernment process. And yes, I'm, I'm in a new location. <laughs> so for me, the biggest thing that happened was I started to recognize a pattern. 
um, I would get kind of where I was supposed to be. I felt like where God wanted me to be. And then I would kind of like um, dip in my toes back in things that made sense to my life before I really fell in love with Christ and walked on my path with him. And I kept thinking, well, there's good in these things. There's good in these things. And there was, but it was like, but what is the better? Like, what is the better of all the things? And one day I was um, looking at my catechism and I was thinking about one particular thing that I felt like that the Lord really wanted me to maybe walk away from. And I was sitting on my catechism looking through it and the word divination came to mind. And I was like, oh goodness, why, you know, that word's a strong word. Um, trying to, you know, really manipulate the things in this world. And um, so I looked it up and I, it wasn't in there, but the word demon was there. And I just felt like, oh my goodness, okay, I need to look at this. I can't explain how I felt, but I had like this, this sense of like, I was searching for something and the Lord was drawing me to him. And there was the word demon and I was like, okay, I'm going to look that up. So I looked at 391 and then my eyes caught 394 in the catechism. And it talked about um, how Satan, what he primarily wants to do is really lead you off the path that God has placed you on. And it was so clear in that moment and like what I was like really trying to figure out. And I felt like, I'm going to put my arm up because it gets tired of holding up my phone. <laughs> um... It was like, this is the issue. I keep going back to my former ways. I keep going back to like what the world has taught me. And I keep thinking, well, there's good there. And there can be some good in the world. But like I said before, like, why would you want this, this good when you could have like the better? And so the Lord helped me see that I needed to clean house. <laughs> he helped me to see that there were some sly demons just hanging around you know we're not talking about possession here but just like some spiritual warfare and so I reached out to my husband um, and I asked him if he knew of a book or program or something that could help someone in spiritual warfare and he was like who is this for and I was like it's for me and so he got back to me he asked me a whole bunch of questions um because it's like you know part of what he does for his work and he recommended the program Unbound so um, it's a Catholic program. Well, it's for any denomination, but it's made by a Catholic. So, so I went ahead and ordered that. I got the workbook. I'm actually doing it with a couple of different Catholic women. But that was like the first step of me saying, no more. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to go back and forth. There's a scripture in the Bible, and I'll look it up. Um, I can't remember where it is, but I know it. And it talks about how um, when a demon is cast out of you, um, it roams the world. And um, finally it says, you know, let me go back to where I was originally. And when it comes back, it's seen that, you know, that the house, quote unquote, um, is, has been cleaned up and organized. And it comes back with himself with seven other stronger demons. And it's worse for that person than it was prior for the first time. And I have something like that happened in my life. That's a different story, but um, like a lot of years ago. And... What I noticed was that it was almost like there's like this one demon that's <laughs> like really sly and like kept just hanging around and it was always like trying to, um, and some of you guys might be like, this is so like out there and that's okay. This isn't a video for you and you're like, this is not for me. That's okay. You don't have to watch this if this isn't for you, but um, I'm, I just want to be honest with you about the spiritual warfare that I've gone through. I mean, I made a video about it um, a while ago on my channel about a previous spiritual warfare um, situation I kind of went through, but this was a different one. This was very like, very sly and very like, just trying to keep, keep stuff in my life that was keeping me from the fullness of Christ. Um, enough where I didn't even notice it was happening, but it was enough where it was keeping me away from peace, keeping me away from um, what God truly wanted in my life. And so when I finally was able to recognize that I got rid of a lot of things. Some of the things that I got rid of was Waldorf. Waldorf was one of those things um, that had just enough like um, heresy and things uh, written in the philosophy of the founder, Rudolf Steiner, that was keeping me um, in a place I, I should not have been. And, um, and so I, I'm in the process of getting rid of, um, the curriculum out of the house and I'm, um, the books, like the books that I had about the philosophies and stuff. And, um, and there were just some other things that I had to work on to make sure to say, like, 
no more. Like I am, I am ready to let go of these things um, and just walk the path that the Lord has set me on. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so there were some other things too, but basically that was it. So I'm doing the Unbound book right now. I've really been spending a lot of time in prayer and I have found that I am blown away with the fact that I was back and forth, back and forth, you know, a Waldorf seat and Waldorf seat and constantly back and forth. Um, other things in my life about how I dress, like where my dress is or my pants or my dress and my pants. Like there was like so many things that might not speak to any of you guys, but you know, the Lord has set me on a path and he made it very clear to me. But because I was really in this place of spiritual warfare, of this like constantly like, well, what should I do? What can't, you know, where, where, should, where, where is the Lord directing me? Like instead of just like spending time, like focusing on, on really seeing what the Lord had done in my life and seeing how he had directed my steps. Instead of staying in that place and staying close to him and just staying prayerful and like, it was like this constant like, but I'm drawn back to this place over here. And like I said, this might not make a ton of sense to a lot of people, but I did want to share it because I felt like it might help one or two people. And so I'm not going to get any more detail with that. But that was basically a big step for me of being able to say no more to this whole dipping myself, my, my toes back in to um, what I was into before and being able to step out of that and say, I am no longer in that. That is no longer part of what I'm doing in my life. Um, and being able to be like having, ha finding peace and saying, this is where the Lord has me. And that's, that's okay. I don't need anything else. I do want to say that, um, the curriculum that I use, I also had a program with a woman and her name was Melissa. She was so helpful in my walk as a woman. So I want to make sure to be like, to clarify that, like when I'm talking about Waldorf, I'm not talking about her. <laughs> She actually was very instrumental in helping me learn how to run my home better and um, how to get my kids in bed earlier and um, take good care of myself. So I just wanted to make sure to clarify that um, when I'm talking about Waldorf, I'm talking about the Waldorf philosophy that comes with, for me, I had a really hard time separating the philosophy from the actual curriculum and, and st stuff like that. But I just wanted to be clear that I'm not talking about her because she was really a blessing to me. And I kind of, I consider her one of my like tightest two women. Um, because I've had different women in my life at different times. And I kind of considered her, um, a woman that really like helped me to encourage me to love my husband and my family and my home. Um, um, during these last like three years of my life. So she was really a blessing in that way. And I wanted to make sure to clarify that. So the second thing I'm going to share about are people that I was feeling responsible for uh, making sure that I behaved or acted a certain way around them. Um, uh, really made sure that like, okay, well, yes, I am a Catholic, you know, Christian woman, but you know, when I'm around these people, I, you know, I kind of act like, you know, maybe kind of my old self or like, um, this or that, because I just wasn't like sure how to behave. Like I wanted to make sure that they were comfortable. Like I was having a lot of that about some people and I felt so distinctly one day after I'd gone through this process, the Lord saying, you are not responsible for these people. God is saying he is responsible for these people. And it is just my job to love them and to follow the Lord. And I did not realize how difficult this area was for me. And so really trusting him and saying, you know what? He is so right. I once had a priest tell me in confession and I was worried about converting people and I wasn't doing a job. This was like years ago. And he was like, you're not the Holy Spirit. That's not your job. And I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> so like kind of like that, like just trusting these people to the Lord and the fact that I, I don't have to be worried that I'm not being compassionate or loving just because I'm loving God and because I'm living out the life that he has created in me and for me. Um, and so being able to just step away from, from, from that like concern and like almost like a false sense of compassion for them and instead just like loving them and being me and trusting the fact that me being myself and the Lord is enough. 
and is truly loving them and truly loving myself. So that was a huge step for me. Um, and so just in case if that's a blessing to anybody or an encouragement, I want to share that. And the last thing this video day I want to talk about was letting go of these worldly concepts that I've just been holding on to. Um, like an example would be like, I should be a certain weight or I should be a certain size of clothing, or I should look this way, or I should, you know, um, when I wear clothing, it should be, um, it should look a certain style. It should just all of these things. Like if I wanted to do certain things for the purpose of, um, enculturation, like fitting with the culture in a sense to, um, be a blessing to the Lord in that culture or, um, or just being comfortable in something, um, like those things are fine, but like feeling like I am not worthy of something or good enough of something. If I am not the right weight or size of clothing, or if my hair isn't the right color, or if I don't talk the right way, or all these like things that you learn growing up in the culture, in the world of like, this is how you fit in. And then therefore this is how you belong to a community. And then therefore there is your worth. And this was what makes you make sense. God has really worked on that with me saying like, this is not, you know, these are not my ways. This is not how I have created you. This is not what I'm calling you to do. And I have been praying for years for a lot of the things I'm talking about today. I've been praying for years to like broken away from these things, if that makes sense. And I feel like finally, finally, I've been able to get to a place where I can really hear what the Lord is like asking me to do and then doing it and being obedient in it. Um, and right now I'm in the process of um, doing my consecration to Jesus through Mary. Um, I've gotten a ton of books for my no spend year, which sounds funny. I'm not going to spend, but I'm spending now for the year 2021 so that I have some things in place that I can learn about specific subjects. I've got lots of books on the rosary. I have some on Our Lady. Um, I have books on modesty and um, just so many beautiful books. And I'm really excited about kind of diving into them and really seeking the Lord and like finding him. And I'm just... I'm just so thankful. And this is the book, by the way, I have a big pile of books over here. This is the book Unbound, if anybody's interested, by Neil Lozano. He also makes one called um, something like, I think, Deliverance from from the Devil, A Catholic's Perspective on Deliverance or something like that. Uh, but his name is Neil Lozano. They have this book on Audible, which I'm listening to right now, even though I have the book. Um, and And so, yeah. Um, anyway, so I wanted to make this video. I felt called to, I wanted to share these three specific areas that God has just moved mountains in my life. They might not even sound like mountains, but y'all mountains in my life and have made a huge difference. And it's really amazing. Cause I also have this book I'm also reading called, um, not of this world. It's a Catholic, it's a book on Catholic, um, like minimalism from a Catholic perspective. <gasps> it's so, so good. And it's helping me also kind of break these ties to things. Cause I made a video a while back, like I am not a minimalist because when I was watching minimalist like stuff, I remember thinking these people are seeking God. Like it was so obvious to me. And I was talking to Laura over at what Laura likes. And we were talking about the subject and if you haven't checked out her channel, make sure you do. She has a great channel. But um, we were talking about it and she was like, oh, this book is so good. This one on um, Catholic perspective of minimalism. And she was saying how it was really obvious to her that they were like seeking Jesus, seeking God in these other areas. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad you said that because that's how I felt. So when I got the one on Catholic, the Catholic perspective, I was like, oh, this is so good. So I've been reading that. And um, clearing out so much out of our home, things that we just don't need and watching my kids find so much more peace without having all of these things and having more things like that, like specific ones that they really like and then utilizing free resources like the library. And but anyway, those can be all these other videos to talk about. But I just wanted to talk about this with you guys about these three things that I have really made a huge change in. Um, the Lord has made a huge change in, change in my life. But I'm going to get going. The kids want hot cocoa. We're watching the movie Elf. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. So, if you're new to this channel, I'd love for you to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if this video or any of my videos have been a blessing to you, I ask you to share them. So, hopefully, they can be a blessing to other people. I hope you guys have a great day. God bless.